Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Messy Hair Speed here. But in today's video, I've really figured out offlane Bristleback. I figured out Bristleback as a hero. I made a guide on Bristleback probably about, I don't know, two weeks ago. I really didn't fully understand the hero at the time. I had a gist and I thought it was pretty broken, but now I've played a few games for myself and I've really optimized a lot of things that are making this hero feel absolutely insane. So without further ado, let me break down Bristleback for you and show you why this hero has the potential to be absolutely broken. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is going to help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. In the laning stage, I don't really care if I'm with a melee support or a range support. For me, honestly, I don't mind the melee heroes because the melee heroes are kind of good with Bristleback. Bristleback doesn't want to get pressured at level one, and so having some sort of treant or I had an Earth Spirit in my other game stand and zone out the five, the range force can do that as well. But I don't know, I don't really care. But mostly what I'm concerned about is pushing in the lane. You'll notice that I have a stick, two mangoes, three branches, and tangos. This is the build I'm going to be going basically every single game. I think stick is imperative on this hero, you need the mana. It's not a great stick lane, at least early on against Pudge Morphling, but it will be like a minute or two minutes into the lane when he starts using Adaptive Strike. But regardless, the main thing you want to do is Quill right away. If you don't Quill right away, you can't really play this hero effectively. Because basically, Quilling right away allows you to use the, the second Quill to get CS. The first Quill does 25 damage, the second Quill does like 53, right? So you can actually use the last hit. And you'll see, I'm gonna walk up and when the range creep is half HP, I'm going to hit and quill, right? Morphling, knowing I'm going to do this, uh, tries to deny it. And so that's a good play on his part. But we're able to hit quill. Then we're going to get the CS. And now with this big wave shoving in, even if there was some sort of range support, like I don't really, I guess Trian is here because he doesn't want to get hooked, which is fair. But even if there was some range support, uh, I don't really think it would matter, right? Because the wave is pushing in pretty hard. They have a lot of melee creeps on themselves. And as a result, they cannot really bully us. And that's what you're looking to do because your hero doesn't trade that well early on. You don't really want to spam quills on the enemies because, I don't know, it just doesn't do that much. I feel like it's just much better getting this double wave or just having the wave generally shove into the opponent so that they can't run at you. In both of the games I've played, I've had three tangos. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should just buy three mangoes and no tangos, which I think is probably a bad idea just in case you need the tangos. But I haven't need them in either lane because of the fact that, well, partially Pudge is doing nothing, let's be real. But even in the other game, I was against Avenge Faceless Void. It was whatever, right? The Venge couldn't trade me. She had to deal with the position four and I was pushing in the wave, right? So they could never really go on me. It's not like there was a wave coming into me and then they could try to punish me when that was happening. That was just never happening as my tree and feeds here. You hate to see it, but yeah, the CS is great, right? I'm doubling Morphling right now and that's pretty normal. The only reason this guy's gonna be close to my net worth in, the, in this game is because of this first blood. Like otherwise he wouldn't have been close because I would have been able to zone him out a little bit easier he wouldn't have had as much gold to farm faster and well he just wouldn't have had first blood gold so unfortunately he got kind of thrown a bone this game but for the most part these lanes are extremely easy i rush a ring of health which honestly i didn't even need like part of me feels like maybe i could have went boots if it's like a lane and pressure i can't really pressure morphling too well so i don't know the boots aren't too good this lane ring of health is definitely the way to go it just kind of lets me hit my vanguard timing and eventually flash farm when the time comes. But yeah, as we'll see, because we're focused on last hits, we're dominating this Morphling, right? We're 18 to his 11. And as I said, the only reason we're even on net worth is because of that first blood. So you can really go crazy on this hero because it's so easy to get CS as long as you're spamming the quills. Now, the key is to not use them for every single creep. Like for instance, well, this is actually not a good example because I do use them under tower here. Like I, I don't want to miss CS. So I'll use them anytime I'm afraid of getting denied or just missing. But in situations where I'm not contested, I'm not just gonna quill. Like I'm gonna quill here, of course, because it's gonna push in the lane, it's gonna push the Morphling off of me, and I'm chilling. Another opportunity you don't wanna miss on Bristleback is the opportunity to kill at level four. So you can kill at level two and level three if you decide to skill Goo. That's an option, it's not a bad idea. It's only 12 mana and it actually does so much. It's 3.5 minus armor with only one stack. It's very, very powerful. However, uh, I, I personally like to take the E typically at level two. I just feel like it's a good amount of block, right? When I turn my back to the enemy, it's a good amount of block. 16% is a pretty high number. 
I feel pretty good about it, and I like to save my mana for the quills. So I end up getting hooked here, but it's a pretty easy turn. I don't know why this guy chased me. He clearly doesn't understand how this works. I have a nine stick, uh, <laughs> and Pudge has like zero armor. So once I put a, a goo on him, he's just negative two, and he just insta dies to tree and bristle. It's just, uh, that guy's just goofing up. And so, yeah, we're, we're really, really happy now. Top net worth, uh, feeling great. And at this point with the Vanguard, all I'm looking to do is kind of shove the wave I could technically static the wave and try to shut down the Morphling, and I am going to look to deny creeps, right, uh, in this sequence. I can look to deny creeps, but for the most part, I wanted to push in the lane and then stack. Optimally, you have your supports do this, but for some reason, my supports just didn't want to stack. Now, to be fair, Tree Protector, it's not the best hero at stacking, even though his Q can do it. You can double stack. He just didn't want to do it. These guys just had this idea in their mind that they had to fight. It is what it is. Always ask your supports for stacks, though. It is the way you snowball this hero, okay? Guess you can just kind of farm the lane and get and get fat from farming and pressuring the tower. That is an option. However, the XP you get, the sheer XP you get from taking Ancient Stack is unbelievable. And so you'll see that in a moment from now. I wanted to wait to level 7. Max Quills just kind of speeds up the stacks a bit. So once again, uh, look at this. This is actually really, really nice, right? So this is really important for my efficiency. Once again, I come over on this minute. I stack. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to push in the wave. Actually, no, I decided to drag. This is so I can save mana. I'm only going to do this if I think the mid can't gank me, by the way, which I didn't feel like the Lesh could. Uh, I felt that it just wouldn't work if you tried. Maybe it would be close, but Trian was with me. And so we're going to take the wave, kind of save some mana by dragging the waves together in this case. And then we're going to actually not farm that camp. And we're going to just run straight to the ancients, right? We're going to hit Quill and that's going to stack. And you can do that on both sides, right? Very, very nice. Once again, we're going to take the wave, drag it to a camp, farm that. Next wave, can't drag this one to a camp, whatever it is, what it is. But we will do that with the next wave on the small camp. And we have our arcane ring, right? I always am going to try to take some mana neutral item because I don't want to have to buy soul ring. You can buy soul ring if you have to, but I want to get my axe as fast as possible. So something like a soul ring is a backup. Arcane ring with arcane boots is more than enough mana. A cold bracelet with arcane boots is more than enough mana as long as you're dropping your stat items, right? For instance, uh, you'll notice here when my arcane ring is up, I'll drop my mana boots, pop my arcane ring. And then when my, my mana boots are up, I will often drop my arcane ring and pop my mana boots. And so <laughs> these little bit of efficiencies add up because you do have some mana problems in the early game when you're spamming it to farm. I even pick up a clarity here just to make sure I have enough mana. And once again, another stack. And this is where we go crazy, right? We farm this up. Uh, I farm the large camp first. You can try to farm both at the same time, but then you end up getting hit in the face a lot by creeps and you take a good amount of damage. So I don't know. I prefer farming it this way. Maybe it's more efficient the other way. I'm actually not sure. But yeah, we're going to kite out the stack, farm it up and look at the XP. I mean, this is where it's crazy because just to go back, I'm level eight going into these stacks, low level eight, right? Just just barely level eight. After this large camp, I'm almost level nine. And after the ancient stack, because ancients give an absurd amount of XP, especially the big creeps, we're just shot up to level 10. Two full levels, more than that, right? Actually, yeah, it was more than that. It was more than two full levels. And we are so close to Ags already. All I have to do now is either go back to base if I'm really low on health or buy a salve, right? I buy a salve because I wanted to stay out on the map, right? Don't want to miss out on getting even more XP. We're going to just kind of walk to whatever is open. My team was farming the bot waves for whatever reason, whatever. I'm happy to farm mid. Notice how I'm not looking to force fights. I'm not creating issues. I don't feel the need to pressure. Yes, the Morphling is free farming. He's like close to my net worth because, well, he has three kills. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I, I can't worry too much about it. But you also notice I'm level 11 and he's not, right? We are above this Morphling, even though he has two kills on us. He's got two kills on us. And yet I am more farm and a higher level than him. There's something to be said about that. Imagine this guy doesn't get kills or he had a bad game or it's a hero. I pressure in the laning stage, right? Morphling is just simply I mean, you never do anything to him as Bristleback. His armor is high. He abuses the stick charges to full heal. It just doesn't work. But yeah, we're going to get like a 13 minute axe here right? as I push in this creep camp off to the small camp and we get our axe. Now, what does the axe do? The axe allows you to shoot out six quills, which is so much damage. Guys, it's like a thousand damage or something absurd. I didn't even need it for the slash kill here, but like just right away. That was like 500 damage in the snap of a finger. And in the early game, people's armor sucks, right? Who has good armor? Okay, it's going to be Morphling because he's Morphling. Rubik's at 10, Pudge's at 2, Lesh's at 9. Timber, obviously, it depends if he has stacks. If he doesn't, he's at 9. No one has any armor. 
And so if you can get this ag quickly, right, notice how I didn't upgrade my wand, I didn't buy soul ring, I didn't buy raindrops, I really greed it out to the max. But you should be happy doing this and you should copy exactly this, greed out to the max. And now, I don't even mind continuing to greed, right? I don't mind it because the voodoo mask is a huge timing, we'll get into that in a second, and the shard is a freaking massive timing. The shard on this hero is really broken. Uh, I really believe it's like, honestly insane. Uh, but yeah, you can just use the E to farm. And by the way, you can also use quills while you're turned around and you can goo. It will not make you turn around when you're when you're casting goo while your bristleback is active. The ag's bristleback is active. You can goo at the same time, which is which is really nice. It's quite effective. So we pick up our voodoo mask. And what's really broken about this build is the mana boots I bought for mana and the Vanguard are going to disassemble into Bloodstone. So your timings are going to be ridiculous as we make another stack. As I said, I don't really feel the need to instantly go fight with the Axe because I see the Axe as a farming tool. It's a 20 second cooldown ancient stack taker, right? Look at this. Boom. Go up the one creep that doesn't die, shred it, next can't, we're huge. Look at our net worth, 9.2 to a Morphling that is 3-0 flash farming. And this is not some like new Morphling. This guy's ranked 36, right? So trust me, this guy knows how to farm. I assure you, he knows how to farm, but we are just getting massive. And at some point, the enemy team's going to make a move on me. I'm not going to die to it. And we're going to kill them all. And you'll see that in a moment. So yeah, because we don't overforce any plays, like if the enemy walks onto my side of the map, I'll consider TPing and killing them. But other than that, I don't really care. If, if I want to keep farming, I'm going to keep farming. Like, I'm super happy to just play like this because there's still my shard timing. I hit level 15 now, which gives me more back and side damage reduction. The goo cast range is okay, but it's not that good. And so you take the back damage reduction out. And so I'm just, I'm right, when I'm turned around, I'm taking 48% less damage if they hit me in the back. It's nothing. And so, yeah, you can also pop the Bloodstone to heal up your mana pool, right? Just kind of see this here. I'm at 700 mana, pop the Bloodstone, pop the Ags, and it gives me like 350 mana, right? Pretty damn nuts. It's, it's good. And now just by hitting creeps, we've managed to make a 1.5k gold lead on the, on the Morphling. I mean, isn't this... You have to say this is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. You do have to be very aware of making stacks because that really amps you up. Look at my net worth. I haven't gotten a kill like since the laning stage. That's not true. I got one kill, but it's unbelievable. Now I'm obviously not putting a lot of pressure on the enemies, but that's whatever, right? It's going to pay off. And now we buy the shard. And here's what's broken about the shard. It applies two goose stacks and one quill stack. The reason why it's OP is because it reduces their armor in a massive AOE. And look at the cast range. The cast range is your whole screen. It's your whole screen and the radius is like half a screen. And so look at this play here. We drop down some wards because you know we're to go. We're playing support while we play offlane and we scout them out. We dodge the hook, which frankly, I don't even think it would have mattered if it hit me. There's no shot I'm dying to these two heroes. I would get low, but then I would just turn it around. They decided to commit on me because I guess they just don't understand the state of the game. Maybe they didn't click on me. By the way, I also got Vampire Fangs, which is so good because you benefit from the spell and the lifesteal. Right, the spell lifesteal and the lifesteal. It's insanely good on this hero, this item. But yeah, uh, they try to go on me. I apply the hairball and now they both have two stacks. So Timber is at zero and Pudge is at negative eight, meaning he takes 20% more physical damage. He takes more than pure physical damage. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to ax him here, but eh, whatever, we'll take the kill. <laughs> and stuns do not cancel it, and we take out the pudge. Yep, supports just die from full. With the hairball, you reduce their armor to very, very little, and it's such a low cooldown. It's 10 seconds! This shit is OP! It's OP, 10 seconds! I didn't know where the Rubik was here, but it's such a huge radius, and it just applies to him, and now he's gonna get slowed up. Negative six armor out of nowhere, right? Just drops, like, just drops to the ground. Fortunately for him, he had Pangle Roll, otherwise he was completely dead to me. And as the fight continues on, I get a little bit low, it's a pretty close fight, but we wait for the hairball to come back up, which it does AGAIN, because it's completely broken. It is so broken. And then we wait for our Bristleback to come out, just kiting a little bit. And eventually we, we juke the roll here, we kind of bait them to group up, come in, goose stacks are building up, and eventually we go on the, the Leshrac, and he does stun me here, but look at that. Look at this damage. Unbelievable. We drop the Leshrac to like one health, uh, fight continues on and another hairball comes up. This is my fourth hairball of the team fight. And look at this, this Timber Saw, right? His armor is so low. The combination, honestly, we had this very odd synergistic draft. We have minus armor from Pango, from TA, from Venge, and from me. We had some really crazy minus armor draft that had like absurd synergy somehow. I, I, I mean, we definitely did not plan this, but yeah, we kite out the fight 
bait them in. We're just healing up with every single usage of the, of the W, of the shard, of the E. Pudge decides to go back in and thinks he's going to kill me. I mean, come on now. <laughs> come on now. You really thought that was going to work? And boom, the game is over. There you go. It's GG. The game's over. It's done. It's literally over. The game is over. It's. I'm not kidding. It's over. Right? I'm going to use my Bloodstone, heal up after the fight. Easy. Use my Axe. And now we farm up a Lotus. The reason why Lotus is so good is it purges Spirit Vessel. It gives you armor, which you desperately need. And against something like Pudge, he can't dismember me. So it's just it's just too good. Even It even gets rid of a Timbers Q, the debuff. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, th this game, I mean, at this point, I'm just too farmed. Like, even though this is like kind of a not great... It's an okay Bristleback game. I think Bristleback completely owns their supports. I think their supports don't do anything to me. For instance, a hero like AA or Bane, like some single target anti-heal or like single target control hero, or what's another good example? Maybe Winter Wyvern. If they have like these types of heroes, you'll feel a little bit worse, but like Pudge is so bad against my hero. It's so awful. And I, I think Rubik's pretty bad too. He bought a Vessel, which I think was a good idea, but honestly, it's, it's just not enough. And at this point, I'm happy to keep farming. You can see I'm literally running back and forth like, my path on the map is like boom, boom, boom. Because I know I'm unkillable. Like if they go on me, they're just going to die. I also have tree and armor. So I have so much armor. I have 30 armor, which is wonderful. Uh, we're going to pick up a Kaiosanj here because that amps up the spell I steal. Uh, gives me a lot of damage. Gives me a lot of strength. Makes me very survivable. I'll never have mana problems. Even though I already don't have mana problems, Bloodstone Lotus is plenty. But yeah, at this point, the enemy team, I mean, they can't fight us, right? It, it honestly even does so much damage to heroes with high armor. Like this Morphling's armor is not bad here. Not to be fair, it's reduced by quite a bit, but like, it, this does a lot of damage. 217, 226, 319, 372. It's like a thousand something damage. I'm just pumping out damage. And the thing is, you get you get two of these off in a team fight because it's not like you die first on this hero. Very rarely, right? So you almost always get two of them off. I just think that this build is legit, oh, like so strong. It's just so strong. You just have to hit your timings, guys. I know a lot of people will play this and they'll just fight too much and they won't prioritize stacks and they're going to be like, Speed, this build sucks and I can't win and my teammates are terrible and I don't get any stacks. It's like, I, I didn't get any stacks. I had to make them myself. <laughs> look, at this, look at this ledge. Oh, wait, no, I didn't even. I didn't even. Doof, 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 doof. It's so wonderful. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I just really wanted to make this video because I'm very passionate about the server right now. I think it's super fun, like this build. Not only is it good, it's like fun. You know what I mean? This is one of those builds where you're just like, damn. And it scales too, right? Because at level 20, it scales incredibly well because of a couple things. Number one, the more health you have, the more quills you build up. Uh, and number two, the 25 quill stack damage at 20. Of course you want quill stack damage. It works with the bristleback and your W and your hairball, right? All these things just come together to mean that a hero like like Rubik, look at this, doof, 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 doof. <laughs> he, just, he just dies from full. He's not even squishy. Like, this is like a pretty farmed Rubik. This guy has 1600 health and 18 armor. He's not even squishy. Not to be fair, I don't know why he didn't force staff. That's pretty bad, but <laughs> just dies from full. He literally dies from full. Crazy. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I don't know. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.